Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman Okay, folks, welcome back. In this particular question here, we'll be looking at the sine rule in non-right angle triangles, working at an angle. Okay, so we've got to calculate an angle. This angle that we'll be looking for is called A. Now, whenever we look at this type of question, we make a small table, what we know and what we need to know. So let's have a look at this. We have, for example, here, an angle here and its corresponding side. So I'm just going to join them up together like that. Okay. So we know, okay, excuse me, we know an angle. The angle is 47 and we know its corresponding side. Okay. So there are two pieces of complete, I call that complete set of information. An angle and its corresponding side. Now, we have another angle here that we've got to work out. So that's the bits over here. So what we need to know, so we need to know an angle, okay, so we need to know an angle, that's what we don't know, which is A, and we know its corresponding side. So if you're looking at information that we know and what we don't know, so this bit we don't know, and this bit we do know. So we have one complete set of information, these two. This we know, but this we don't know. Let's connect them together. So we know that one, and we want to work out that one. So whenever you have this type of situation where we know one complete set of information, and the other set of information is incomplete by one item, then we are looking at the sign rule. Okay, now let's have a look at the sign rule. We have little a, over sine A is equal to B over sine B. Now what we need to do here, we need to label this diagram that I've already given this A in the question. I'm going to label this corner here B, which makes that into little b. So if that's big A, the angle, so that will be the, its corresponding length, the little a. So now we have labeled it up, we can, for completeness, we can label the C and little c, they won't be used at all in this particular question. So let's move on. So what do we know? So big A we don't know. Little a we do know. Little b we do know. And big B we know. So on the, in this identity here, which is part of the sine rule, so you know we have A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. So we only need to use these two parts. You only ever need to use two parts anyway in when using sine rule. Now we need to work out the A. At the moment the A is at the bottom of the fraction. We need to get to the top in order for us to be able to work with it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to flip this, this, these two fractions upside down. Okay, so just watch. So we get sine A over little a is equal to sine of big B over little b. Okay, mathematically we're allowed to do that. And we've done that so far. Now we need to do is put the values in and do some rearrangement. We need to make A the subject. We can make A the subject right now first and then put the values in. Let's try that. So A has got a function of sine acting on it. That's our first action. And then it's been divided by A. That's our second action. Okay. Now, when you have two actions and you have to solve the equation, we always move the last action first. So we're going to move the divide by the divide by a first. It comes the other side becomes a time by a. So if we rewrite the other side, even though I've physically moved it to over here, I'm actually going to write the multiply a at the front because we can do that. Multiply the order doesn't matter. So I'm going to choose to write that at the front even though I've taken it to the back over there. Over B. 
is equal to sine of big A. Okay. One more thing we gotta do. We have to now move the sine over, because we've got sine acting on the A. We don't want sine of A, we want just A and zone. So that has to come over here. So opposite of sine is inverse sine, which is written as sine to the minus one. over B. Okay, hope you can see all of that on the video. Just about. Okay, lovely. Now what we need to do, now that we've identified the correct formula, we've turned the formula upside down on both sides, we've rearranged the formula in two steps, we are now ready to insert our values and try it on the calculator. So let's put the numbers in now. So here we go. So I'm just going to bring the calculation, bring this up here. So it says sine to the minus 1 A. The A value is 6. Time by the sine of the big B value. The big B value is 47. Okay. Right. And then we have to put the little b value in the bottom. The little b value is 8. Right. So now we are ready to work out our a value. Now we need to input this into the calculator. Right, let's get one of our Casio scientific calculators out. Okay, so we press to switch it on. So first we press shift and then the sign button that gives you sign minus one. Now you're gonna enter this fraction arrangement by pressing the fraction button. So that gives the top part and the bottom part. We type in six times by sine forty seven. Six times by sine of forty seven. Close a little bracket, bring it down, divide it by eight. Take we press replay, take it back up and close the bracket off. You can close it all. So we've got this bracket and that bracket now. Press equal and we get an answer of 33.265. 33.265. Now, this is an angle. We don't need to have that many degrees of accuracy. So we're going to, for sensibility, we're going to do 33 point. Now, round right off to one decimal place. We look at the second one, if it's five or more, add one, so that two becomes three. So we find we finish up the question and we worked out the value of A. A is 33.3 degrees. Okay, thank you very much for joining us on this sign rule question. And this complements another question which we're working at the sides. So this is when we worked at the angle. Hope this technique has helped you with your GCSE higher exam questions and please join us again. Yeah. Next video.